What is up, Green Bay Packers fans, and welcome back to another edition of The Daily Draft, brought to you by the good folks at Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin, just minutes from beautiful Lambeau Field. I am your host and the publisher of Packer Report, Ross Uglum. Very excited today to talk about one of what I would say is the more likely Green Bay Packer targets with pick number 25 in the first round, and that would be University of Washington offensive lineman Troy Fatanu. Troy Fatanu was a player that was always pretty high on my board and, and definitely somebody on my radar, but absolutely tore up the combine, tested well, and honestly, we've talked about this a little bit before, just looked good and looked like a tight end, and that's valuable to me on the offensive line. Like There are sloppy-looking offensive linemen, and frankly, there are sloppy-looking offensive linemen that work out in the NFL. The guys you know, running that 40 stuff, bouncing all over the place that there are guys that that has worked Orlando Brown. I mean, I don't mean to you know necessarily put guys on blast, but like it, look, it's, it's worked out before. Right. With that said though, I think the higher hit rate or certainly Packers higher hit rate is the, the guys whose, you know, stuffs are kind of together. They don't have the spare tire over the waistline. Right. They, they look like big tight ends. And I thought Fah Tanu for a guy that carries 317 pounds, or something in that range, I got to look again. But I think, man, he looked good and moved well in the drills. And I just thought, as I thought when I watched him on film, this is a high-level athlete. This is a top-level athlete. And that's one of the things that jumps out to me. Um, I think he's versatile. Most of his snaps were at left tackle. That's where most teams will put their best offensive linemen, um, even with the spread system. The best guy plays on the left side, and um, Fatano played left tackle. And I, I think the versatility is more of a projection, but I think it's likely. Why do I say that? He's short. That, that sounds like a bad thing, <laughs> but he's, he's short. Um, so he's got good enough leverage and power. You, you can see him move, guys. He's got good enough leverage and power to play guard. He's got long enough arms because they are long at 34 and a half inches. He's got long enough arms to survive out there at tackle. Experience. He's got two years of full-time starting on a very, very, very good college football team. Two-plus thousand, 2,000-plus college reps. Most of them, again, as I said, at the premier position of left tackle. And, of course, I mean, you know, I talk about him on my radar. You had to have him on your radar. It, you, If you're into the 2024 NFL draft or you were at any point, you had to watch the Washington Huskies play offense. There's a reason they were in the college football playoff. Rosengarten is a is a a draft pick, the other tackle. Fatanu is a prior first rounder. Adunze is a top 10 pick, flat out. Um, Penix is going to be right there in the top 50 somewhere, the quarterback. All three receivers, Polk, McMillan, and again, I already said Adunze are going to be top 150 picks. I am convinced of it. Culp, I think, even is, uh, and I think one of the interior linemen is even on the radar. Like They were just loaded with NFL talent on that offense. But Fatanu... Man, he's probably not the best of the bunch just because I think that much of a Dunze. But he's a really, really good football player and is exciting to watch. High-level pass protection guy. Um, two sacks allowed over the course of his two full seasons as a starter and only five other quarterback knockdowns, so he kept Penix upright. And by the way, Penix was not really a automatic just get the ball out of my hands and to my elite weapons guy. He bought time. He moved around. He waited. He made plays with his feet. made plays with his arms. But... You know, it wasn't like blocking for Tom Brady back there. It wasn't three steps, hitch, go, five steps, hitch, go. That's not Michael Penix Jr. I'm not saying that as a criticism of him necessarily either. I am just saying that that is not like Fatano was not asked to block for two and a half seconds and then go. He was asked to block, block, and he did. He did it well. Um, very athletic player despite his lack of length. So, you know, the RAS is height, weight adjusted. Granted, we don't have agilities, which are important. I'm excited to see what happens on Washington's pro day. But also, Fatanu, I thought in, in the drills, I just saw like, oh, he's going to be good. I bet he'll have 80th plus percentile agilities and maybe even boost this total relative athletic score above 9.45, which is where it's at. But what, I, what I'm saying, you know, what's so impressive? Well, to run a 93rd percentile 40 with a 94th percentile vert and a 95th percentile broad, that's really impressive. And to do it with a less than a 10th percentile height dragging down your score. That's what this guy is an athlete athlete. Would it be better if it was six, six? Yeah, it would. 
But what I'm saying is this 94th percentile tackle is getting his total score drugged down by the fact that he's 6'3 and three quarters. Um, devastating as a run blocker, especially on the move. Incredibly violent with his hands, both in the pass pro phase and the run blocking phase. Displaces guy, excellent hand placement, but the violence of his hands is what gets me. Um, looks for work. Okay, We talk about guys that look for work. Fatano looks for work. Quick as a cat. He is just quicker than snot, man. He is that first step, his ability. He got he has he has Matt LaFleur, Sean McVay's zone. And I know McVay's put in more gaps, gap stuff and is actually like drafting these enormous offensive linemen as sort of like the next phase of what he's doing. But if you're gonna run wide zone and split zone and you're Matt LaFleur and you have your style of this offense. Boy, Fatana could be something special in the run game. And he's good enough in the pass pro game, but he could be something special for what Green Bay likes to do in the run. Creating angles and then having the strength to move guys from those angles. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and dunk on John Ryan Jr. He would, the diff, you would notice such a difference, I guess, is all I'm trying to say. If Fatana was the right guard instead of JRJ running both front side and backside zone stuff, you know, him as the cutoff man running left or as kind of more of a, 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 a point of attack guy running right. It just would be very different than what the Packers have had at right guard. And I don't mean that to be a jerk. It just, it would be very different. Um, cons plays almost too fast at times. He's a little bit reckless. He can get out of position. Uh, and then the obvious one, was just like, if he's too short to, to play anything, but guard, what does that do to his value? There might be teams that just say, Hey guys are, you know, Six four and a quarter, we're done. And you'll see that. I mean, the Packers starting David Bakhtiari and Zach Tom at six four at tackle are outliers, big time outliers. I one of the other videos, I'm not going to do it again because I don't have the list up here, but I listed the top 10 tackles in overall grade and their heights. And it was all of six five, six, 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 eight, six, five, six, 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 five, six, six. Then you finally got to Zach Tom at six foot four. But the Packers Honestly, as much as people think they're obsessed with athleticism and height and weight and, and things like that, they've been playing like the shortest tackles in the league, to be honest. But even the Packers might say, hey, 6'4 is it for us. You know, We don't care how long your arms are. 6'4 is it. I don't know that to be true. I don't. But there might be other teams where it's the same thing. Hey, 6'4 and a half, 6'4 and an eighth. That's, that's our line. Otherwise, you're a guard, period. Or you're off our board, one of the two. Um, he will try to KO people. He will. And again, that is just if this is your biggest problem, you're good, right? <laughs> it's, it's good. We like that. Uh, gets beat constantly, isn't you know, slow feet. Those would be big problems. Occasionally gets too aggressive trying to clobber people in help pass protection. When I talk about looking for work, or you know, tries to put a guy's you-know-what in the dirt in the run game and gets himself out of position or whiffs. Those are occasional problems. They are not consistent problems. And ultimately, I just think he needs a good offensive line coach and maybe one year to really get ready to play, especially especially if he is going to make a transition uh, to the guard position and play inside. I think his arms are too long to play center. It's a weird thing, but I think his arms are too long to play center. I think he's a guard with emergency tackle flex. That's what I think he is. Packers fit pretty darn perfect. Pretty darn perfect. Um, as I, you know, as I kind of understand it, um, he's shorter than both Tom Brady. Excuse me, Tom Brady, Tom and Bach. <laughs> Tom Brady. TB. Tom Bakhtiari, not Tom Brady. And they have both been the shortest tackles. So he is shorter than Zach Tom and shorter than David Bakhtiari. I don't know that that means that they absolutely won't play him at tackle. I just know that he is shorter than the shortest tackles that I know of. Well, that throws a whole nother wrench into things because the Packers have not taken anything, which is where you'd have to take Fatanu. I, I, Jordan Morgan might be there at 41. Graham Barton might be there at 41. I am convinced that, that, Troy Fatano. I'm not convinced Troy Fatano is there at 25. I am pretty darn convinced that Fatano is not going to be there at 41. And why I bring that up is the Green Bay Packers have not used a first round pick on a center or a guard in so long. 
so long, guys. Um, Sherrod and 11, a tackle. Bulaga and 11, a uh, 10, excuse me, a tackle. Um, going back, I think you have to go back pretty far from that point to Ross Verba is a tackle in 97. John Michaels is a tackle in 96. Aaron Taylor in 1994 was the last time that they took a guard in round one. Aaron Taylor was a good player. But as I mentioned, 1994 is the last time that they took a guard in round one. And that would kind of be what they were doing, I think, with Fadzano. Maybe not. Again, I could be wrong. But he is shorter than the shortest guys that they have played at tackle. And it's, it's by a quarter inch. I mean, it's not six, three and seven eighths, it's six, three and three quarters. He is shorter than 6'4". No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Maybe they'll play him at tackle. What the hell do I know? Okay. Um, I think he's a very likely pick at 25 if he's still available. Everything I just said, I still think he's a very likely pick um, at 25 if he's available. And if he's the pick there, it means that Sam Seal likes him. Why do I mention Sam Seal? Well, you know, I, sometimes I've gotten criticized on this channel. You say they like the Pac-12. Do they really like the Pac-12? Well, specifically, I think they like the West Coast. So working backwards here, let's talk about just top 100 picks. But working backwards here, let's talk about the Pac-12 and the Mountain West. So the West Coast of this country. Round two in 2023, Luke Musgrave, Oregon State. Uh, round three in 2022, Sean Ryan, UCLA. Nobody in 21. Round one in 2020, Utah State of the Mountain West, young Jordan Love. Continuing on, nobody in 2019, nobody in 2018. 2017, Kevin King, Washington, Sam Seal, West Coast Scout. Moving back to 2016, Kenny Clark, UCLA, West Coast Scout. Round three, Kyler Fackrell, Utah State, probably the West Coast Scout. Moving back another year. To 2015, Demarius Randall, Arizona State, Pac-12, West Coast Scout. Ty Montgomery in the top 100 still, Stanford, West Coast Scout. Moving back to 2014, round two, Devontae Adams, Fresno State, West Coast Scout. Moving back to 2013, Dayton Jones, UCLA, Pac-12, West Coast Scout. By the way, not in the top 100, but at pick at 109, David Bakhtiari, Colorado, Pac-12, West Coast Scout. And finally, because I'm just going to stop droning on about this, 2012, Nick Perry, USC, round one, pick 28, West Coast Scout. So when I say that they love the Pac-12, they really love their West Coast Scout. And that's done well and done bad, right? Like, we love Luke Musgrave. You know, all thumbs up about that. We love Jordan Love. Uh, not so much on the Kevin King, right? Big thumbs up on the Kenny Clark, not so much on the Kyler Fackrell. Two thumbs down on the Demarius Randall, right? Good and bad. A lot of good, though. A lot of good. Aaron Rodgers, Cal Berkeley, Clay Matthews, USC. A lot of good. A lot of good out on the West Coast. Not, not going to complain about what you know they've done by putting their faith in Sam Seal. And Fottown is a perfect example of that, and that was the only point that I was trying to make there on the Packers' fit side, even though I got a little bit long-winded about what I was talking about. Um, complete, I, I think, you know, if you're talking about his actual fit, I think he can be competes immediately at right guard and provides emergency services at right and left tackle. Um, as things go, I think they might bring back Yash Nyman as, as the, you know, which I don't understand at all. I watched that kid play and I know people give him a hard time. There's about 10 starting left tackles in this league that are worse than him. And if the number is not 10, it is eight. So I think it's crazy that nobody has signed nyman yet to my knowledge because yeah those teams might want to address it in the draft but there are a handful of left tackles in this league starting that are just not as good as that kid is so maybe that's an addition but um, otherwise i do think really fatanu could be your emergency swing tackle and start at right guard which is awesome i mean that that plugs a lot of holes and potentially with a really really good football player I think he accomplishes a lot for Green Bay. And that was my last note there um, on the Packers fit. Might feel like a shorter show. It's because I don't have a lot of mean things to say. You talk about my overall grade. He's got a low round one. Uh, and, and for me, that means he's awesome because, as I'll say here, he's my offensive guard number two. Can he make it a tackle? Maybe. But I'm ranking as him as the number two guard in this class. And for me to give any guard a round one grade, he's a dude. And they probably have to have a little tackle flexibility, which 
he does. I mean, Quentin Nelson would be like a example of a guard that I'd just go ahead and give a round one to without any tackle flex. But Fatanu Fuaga, like these guys that I have ranked highly at guard have some tackle flex. Even Cooper Beebe played a lot of tackle in college. I don't think I'd do that to him in the NFL. But Fatanu, my 28th overall player, my number two offensive guard, a low round one grade, and I think one of the likelier candidates for the Packers to actually take uh, with their first round pick, which is number 25. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for listening. If you're on the podcast side, um, how can you help us out? Buy the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Packer Report. Promo code DAILY, as in daily draft. That is D-A-I-L-Y for 10% off of that guide. And uh, we're just so excited to show it to you. Going to have a Packer-specific mock draft. Going to have Packer people which is that really deep dive into the threshold stuff by Jake Stack. I'm going to write, I think, two different feature articles. Uh, one maybe on the defensive side of the ball. One maybe on the offensive side of the ball. It, it's going to be awesome. And as we said, buy the Cheesehead TV Draft Guide too. Like well, That's not what this is about. We, we Buy all the Packers-specific. Sp- guys, please spend all of your uh, dispensable income on Packers content. That's what we like. That's what we, uh, that's what we want here. Got some super exciting stuff potentially coming up with Badger State Brewing. Stay tuned on that and uh, do everything you're supposed to do here at the uh, Pack a Day podcast YouTube feed. Like, subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications, get all of the Packers content that you need. And as is in both the Daily Draft and the Pack a Day podcast name, get it on a daily basis. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and go Pack Go.